Hey everybody, this is Gary Fong, and this is uh, really cool because I asked for a question of the day uh, from our uh, Facebook corporate fan page, and I got a good question from Mike Goodlander. He asks, Gary, I'd like to do some video recording using my 7D editing. What program do you recommend to edit and even bring together several .mov files? Thank you. So the answer to that is it depends if you're going to do multiple cameras or if you're going to do a separate sound file and put those together. If you're not, then you can just go ahead and use something like iMovie because iMovie is uh, it's a very solid piece. You can just basically bring your files in and then you can go ahead and put dissolves in between the clips and things like that. If you're going to go to a two camera shoot or separate sound file like you're using an audio recorder uh, that's separate from your uh, camera then you're gonna want something like uh, f well you're not gonna want Final Cut Pro X for many reasons that I'll talk about here you're gonna want Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro is actually a really good value now because the way that it works is Adobe's got a thing called the Creative Cloud and the Creative Cloud is I think about 30 bucks a month or something like that and with that you get Photoshop you get uh, Adobe Premiere you get you get a whole bunch of uh, software titles and uh, all for that monthly price. Now, I think Premiere alone is about 900 bucks or something crazy like that. So, um, I would say get Creative Cloud and then, yeah, it's about $30 a month and you get pretty good support, 24-7 uh, support you can get on a chat line. And let me tell you why Premiere Pro is the only way to go on that one. Final Cut Pro X is a maddening, uh, nutty... Uh, well, let me tell you about uh, some of the reasons why you don't want to use Final Cut Pro X. First of all, the file management is absolutely crazy. Uh, number one, it won't open MTS files, which is what a lot of your cameras like Panasonic, Sony, many of the cameras come uh, have an MTS file and it won't open it. So you need to convert those files before you even bring it into Final Cut. That's number one. So if you have like a Panasonic or Sony or uh, I don't know, there's many cameras that use MTS files. You're out of luck with Final Cut Pro X. Second reason is the file management is absolutely nutty. Final Cut Pro X makes all these different event files completely its own format, impossible to trace. And if you have the any if you've moved any of the files anywhere else, there's a big, big uh, question mark. So and it's a big space hog. What it will do is it'll take your uh, source files and it'll create a new event and from that event it'll create projects now if you don't do something that you can only find out in forums and um, uh, I mean it's it's hard to find this but there's a thing called making a folder called hidden events you literally have to take your events that you've done before and put them in a new finder file called hidden events or else uh, it's going to completely clog up your Final Cut Pro X. Uh, there's so many reasons why Final Cut Pro X is a uh, very, very poorly designed, clunky uh, piece of software. Now, if you're going to go into multiple camera shoots and you want to have some fast processing power and you're going to shoot you know, all of these things that say 1080 at 60 frames a second, then you're going to want fi uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro uses a Mercury graphics engine which greatly speeds up the uh, processing of the files. Um, it's so much faster than uh, Final Cut, uh, especially on, well you need a computer that uh, uses the Mercury graphics engine and that would be uh, for example a Retina uh, 15 inch and I believe the new IMAX but anyway when you do that it, it literally makes you giggle how fast that you can process things now the processing time on Adobe Premiere is just basically it takes the file and makes a proxy image for you to then view cut trim edit do whatever you want and then it'll show you uh, you know the playback and if you've got a slower processor you can take the quality down so that you can just kind of see, just like if you have a slow speed on YouTube, you know, it gives you kind of a crappy image, highly pixelated, but, um, and then once you're done with that, then it will export your file in high quality into a variety of different formats. So I don't see too many cons with Adobe Premiere Pro. Again, if you're going to buy Final Cut, you're going to spend maybe 400 bucks. I wish I had that money back because I, I won't use uh, Final Cut ever again. Um, 
but if you get Premiere Pro, it's just 29 bucks a month, and then you know you can play with it, and then discontinue if you decide that you don't want to do uh, multicam editing or you don't need Photoshop CS6. Then just go ahead and discontinue your Creative Cloud membership. The Creative Cloud membership, by the way, allows you to do two computers simultaneously, so that's kind of cool. Anyway, I uh, hope that answers your question. Again, single camera shoot, use iPhoto or any kind of simple editing software. Going to multiple camera shoot, go to Adobe Premiere Pro and not Final Cut Pro X. Okay, hope that helps. Bye.